Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter, and today I'm gonna to walk you through a little bit, a high-level overview of how to do this gingerbread house that is from Karina Gardner. So before we get started, though, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I totally appreciate all the support that I can get. Okay, so Karina has the tutorial, which I will host on here, hopefully, um, how, to, how to put together her gingerbread house. So I have the pieces, like I'm starting to put, the, put it together. So I have some high level tips and tricks for this. Um, but the main thing that I wanted to focus on is Karina uses, oh, and actually, so you go to the Karina Gardner shop um, and you wanna go under shop and this is an ultimate paper project. Um, from here, look at this, it's right here. It's this gingerbread house. So um, the one that we're making, so what happens is she uses a silhouette to make this. She's made a gigantic version and then she's made this version, which is the one I believe that I'm gonna be making right now. So <laughs> I don't know because I just decided to cut it. And you'll see why um, why I say that. Um, she the, the main difference that I'm seeing when she's putting it together is she likes to use a hot glue gun. I am using Barely Art Glue just because I'm so used to using it for one. Um, it's how I build my 3D letters. And so I feel like this project is very similar in building a 3D letter um, in that you're taking pieces and you're, you're taking multiple pieces and making it into a 3D structure. So, all right. Once you purchase the file, I mean, look at how stinking cute this is. I have not cut out these pieces yet. I've only cut out the base and I'm putting together the base right now. Um, all right, so when you go into design space, let me show you what it looks like. It's gonna blow your mind because <laughs> it's such a big project. I This is definitely my biggest project to date. Um, and I am... Woo, it scares me. All right, so here it is. I'm gonna add it to the canvas and you're gonna see it's gonna take a while, okay? It is a gigantic file. What I found is once I realized, uh, first of all, I you know I go down to 25% so I can see more of it. Um, the reason why I didn't even bother to resize it is I'm gonna show you right now. Let's go to the make it page. Um, I'm going to do for any material. I'm actually going to use a 12 by 24 mat because honestly, my mind, I can't even comprehend doing this on 12 by 12 mats because it's cutting so much because check out 38 mats. It's actually more mats than that because, um, as you can see, for instance, in the white, it goes through the 12 by 12 line. So I'm gonna have to move this because I'm not gonna be able to cut this with 12 by 12 cardstock. You could buy 12 by 24 uh, paper if you wanted to do for this project. I do have 12 by 24 for white, but let me get to the structure part so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So here's the structure. Um, everything can be cut on a 12 by 12 mat and 12 by 12 cardstock. But you can see here, you need to move this because the 12, 12 inch line is right here. If you're using a 12 by 24 mat and you're using 12 by 12 cardstock, you can't have anything in this 12 inch line, right? Otherwise you're gonna, it's gonna cut it in, in half or whatever. So you're gonna have to rearrange and move some of these things over. So I'm gonna click on the three dots, move object, and I'm gonna move it to another mat. I mean, just look at how many mats. That's why once I saw this, I, I'm, I said, I'm gonna make it however I need to make it. I, in my mind, I cannot even imagine um, making it bigger. And then if I make it bigger, it's gonna be more mats. And I just said, no way. So, all right, we're gonna move it to this mat that looks like it doesn't have that much on it. And I'm gonna confirm. So you're gonna need to rearrange some of these things, okay? The other thing that I noticed with her file is there is a section on here that you're going to need to attach. Almost everything, all the cut lines are attached except for just a few things. So let's focus on when you're cutting this. So I noticed that the first few times I cut it, I tried to cut just my, um, just the structure of it, right? None of the fun, fancy um, details. And my Cricut would 
maybe after a, a sheet or two would uh, basically stop at like 70%, which of course then ruined the rest of the cut. And then I got to go back, which one did I cut already? So what I would recommend is getting rid of everything, getting rid of everything but the structure so that you can cut the structure and then, um, and then cut all your details. So what we'll do then is you're going to have to click on the file and ungroup it. Okay. All right. So it's ungrouping. Then what you want to do is we're basically going to get everything. We're going to get rid of everything, but the actual structure. So you're going to delete and it's going to take a little while, but honestly, it's better this way. Okay. So you're going to delete, delete, All right, and then once I click on here, I'm gonna go down to here and click on, on this and delete. And then here I'm just gonna, cause I can see it, I can just grab all this and delete. Cause this file is so big, it's hard to move around to get to everything, to find it all. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to save this file as just a structure because just in case if your thing, um, you know, like mine gets stuck or whatever, you don't want to have to redo this process or like if it shuts down for you or for whatever reason, <laughs> you want to save your progress. Okay. So for instance, now I'm going to actually save and I'm going to put gingerbread house demo just the house because I've already done this I don't want to mess myself up <laughs> all right um let's see we're gonna keep going there's a few items here there are these little black marks I don't know if they're important right now but I'm deleting them because I'm not cutting out little black items like that okay let's get to the green and sometimes it's easier to grab onto a hold of like the green right here. So it brings me to the right place on the screen so I can do that. Okay. And then you can scroll over here to see what do we have left. So here, where are we? We're here. Okay, there's still quite a bit going on here. We're going to ungroup it. That way we can move this out and we can get rid of this. Ungroup that. Okay, now you see for these, you have all these marks right here. They're these individual cut marks. What you need to do with this is you need to grab this and you need to attach, okay? Let me show you the difference. This one, it's already there. There's nothing to attach. So this one, you can see, uh, let's see, what is this? Oh, these two, these two, for whatever reason, when she, saved it or whatever it didn't attach itself so now we're going to grab this and we're going to attach okay and i think that is it oh uh, wait is there more no okay i think we're good let's let's save it one more time and let's go to the make it page oh i missed some right here but that's okay on mat 12 by 24 confirm so it's gonna, there's some whites that I missed, but it's okay, because we've gotten down to 22 mats. We went from 38 to 22. And it's pretty much, oh, I missed a lot actually. Hold on, let's get rid of some more because we don't want this to get in the way of our, of messing up. 
Let me see if I can find them. Oh, here we go. So you can get rid of here. We're just going to get rid of the candy canes. We may have it, but let's save it. <laughs> I still have a red in here. Let's see, confirm. I've got one, I missed one red dot. And a yellow and a purple, but that is what I would do. And then I would go cut all the pieces together. All right, let me flip this screen for a second. It's going to look really, really messy. All right. And hold up. <laughs> this is my current workspace. Don't judge. Let me zoom in. All right. Let me move this out of the way. Um, okay. I'm back. Okay, so I want to show you. So this is what I've done so far, right? You basically just fold and glue, and I use paper clips just to hold it in place while it's drying. Not that it takes a long time to dry, because Barely Art doesn't take that long, but you can see it's gonna it's gonna look so freaking awesome. <laughs> um, but I wanted to move on, so I just you know put the paper clips in. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be so cute. I changed the colors, so I'm excited about that as well. Okay, so basically you want to fold wherever you have these cut lines. You're going to fold it, and then you're going, I'm going to use Barely Art Glue. So she has the video, which I'm going to link here or hopefully post, and um, make that available to you here as well. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to glue one side at a time and I'm going to do this part right here and I'm just going to add my glue. Whoop. I got some on the front. Okay. And you really, because all these pieces are integral, like to one, you know, it's all these mini little buildings and blocks that will be added to the house. You want to make sure that you're lining it up in here so that they're straight lines, um, if that makes sense. So I just lay them flat, make sure I'm pressing down to make sure that all the glue is. Um, attaching itself from the top layer to the bottom layer and and the reason why I'm using barely art glue instead of the hot glue gun like Karina's using is because um, I like having a few more seconds than I normally would with the hot glue gun so this isn't going to dry on me so quickly. And I feel like, you know, these days I'm just not working that quickly and I don't want to recut anything. So I'd rather it take a little bit longer to let me adjust, especially because we really want to line everything up properly too. Um, it matters when we're putting it all together as opposed to, you know, something where like, you know, if I'm slightly off, it's not going to be a big deal. So that's why I went with the Barely Art glue. So I'll be really curious in the end when I talk to Karina about this, um, if she would agree with me. But it could be one of those things where, you know, like all your life or all your crafting life, you use a certain product. So you're so used to, um, you know, the, the quirky, the quirky personality traits. So yeah. I mean, that might be it. So there we go. So we've got that. And so you see it's going to stand and then we're going to glue this together. Everything. Yeah, did I not fold this? I did. Okay. The other thing is um, because we're folding and we want to build good structures, 
I wouldn't recommend using anything less than 80 pound cardstock. So I'm using basil paper right here. This is turquoise mist and it goes along with my wreath over there. Um, because we're folding so much, I wouldn't want it to rip apart. So you do want some, you know, some rigidness to the paper so that you can stand it and glue it all together. All right, I'm gonna do this one. Okay, I'm gonna glue this together. And then, Um, so I'm just going to hold this a little bit longer while it glues. And you know, maybe the, the good, good solution would be to use both glues because on these edges right here where you actually bend, um, you either need to just be a little bit more patient and wait till it dries before you let go, which I guess that wasn't that long. I don't know, just the idea of using a hot glue gun right here um, makes me nervous because it dries so quickly and I spent so long cutting just the structure, I don't wanna do it again. <laughs> so, all right, that is all that I, and I would follow her tutorial because she goes block by block so it'll be easy to follow and I don't want to recreate that but these are my tips um the other thing is you can make this really really big um let's finish this one first before I figure out if I want to make it even bigger but she did recommend that if we're going to do the bigger structure um she used her silhouette pro big so that she could use much bigger paper and I would agree with that because you might have to do some engineering and with it being like a structure and you want it to be sturdy. Um, I don't know if I want to slice anymore and try to make that work. So, all right, that's all I have for you. I cannot wait to show the final product, but I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy it when I, you know, explore myself and find other crafters and other designers um, to bring to you. Uh, I don't know, kind of like for me, like when I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed or Pinterest is that there's so many things out there that I wouldn't, I wouldn't know to look for if someone didn't bring it to my attention. So I hope you're enjoying this journey, like with the wreath, um, with the 3D ornament ball that I'm about to do, um, that you enjoy it as much as I do. All right, thank you so much. Comments, questions, please post it below. But everything is from Karina Gardner for this project, and I'm super excited to be working with her. All right, thanks, guys.